you know, these other dimensions that I felt were present. And I was, I got really excited. I was like, oh my God, finally an adult that's going to talk about something real, you know, and <laughs> something that makes sense to me. So the teacher started the lesson and I got really, really disappointed. He didn't tell me anything about the dimensions that I was experiencing earlier on in my life. But he actually gave me one of the major keys to the evolution of this theory and to it, its uh, conclusion and then to its proof that is now being uh, peer-reviewed in many universities around the U.S. and uh, from scientists that are looking at it from NASA and so on. So it's really exciting. And that, at the age of 10, made a huge difference. What the teacher did is he went to the blackboard, and we'll call this our blackboard today, and he made a dot. And he said, the dot is dimension zero, and it doesn't exist. And I went, okay, I can see it, but it doesn't exist. And, um, you know, I was near the door in the back of the room. I was always closest to the door because I was having so much problems at school. And, um, you know, I'm like, okay, whatever, you know, if you got a dot that didn't exist, I can go with that for now. <laughs> and then he said, uh, this is a series of dots that he placed together and made a line and said this is dimension one and it doesn't exist either, it just still doesn't have volume. And, you know, that seems consistent to me. Uh, then he placed a bunch of lines that are made out of dots together, made a plane, called it 2D and said this is the dimension that you live, uh, that your comic strips lives in. Uh, it still doesn't exist, it still doesn't have volume. Well, until then, although, you know, it was kind of a bizarre approach, it was consistent, but then he did something that seemed like a miracle. He grabbed six of these planes and put them together on the blackboard, made a cube, and said, this is mentioned three, 3D, that one you exist in. And uh, I was in the back of the room and I'm like, oh my God, how can that be? And I could tell that all the other kids in the room were like, huh? You know, but nobody was saying anything. I wasn't about to put my hand up because I knew the next thing that was going to happen is the door was going to get open and I was going to get kicked out again. So I didn't want to do that. So I didn't say anything, but it didn't make sense because it's like, that was a mystery cube. Because if you have a dot that doesn't exist, that makes a line that doesn't exist, that makes a plane that doesn't exist. You slap six non-existing planes together, you don't get existence. All you get is non-existence to the fourth. <laughs> okay? It's got nothing to do with existence. You just have got a bunch of non-existing dots together, so nothing exists. And that was not logical. And I have a tendency to be an extremely logical human being. And it turns out that uh, Buckminster Fuller I found out later, had the same problem at school. He wrote about it in his book. And he didn't understand how this worked neither, and he didn't thought it was correct. And actually, through my research, I found that this is an ancient riddle. Uh, it's mentioned in ancient manuscripts um, that are from the Middle East and so on, and there is all sorts of, um, of treaties about this problem, although this problem is the foundation of our understanding 
of physics and dimensions. And all of our knowledge is actually based on it. And it creates a lot of problems. This simple riddle that is unsolved 